I wanna be on the cover of You're listening to Hometown Station AM 1220 KHTS. This is Chris Mendenhall sitting in for Darby Noakes. Everybody's cranky that she's not here because she's so much better looking and nicer than I am. But hey, it is what it is. But we have Johanna from Frankfurt, Germany, who's sitting in the studio with you. You don't get this. We we should pull a mic for her, but she's uh, watching us and uh, making fun of us. She was explaining that uh, Johanna is spelled with a G, not a J, Dave, for crying out loud. But uh, anyway, we uh, appreciate you listening to our show. We're talking about real estate, and it was interesting uh, to me. It was an article from uh, DataQuick about foreclosures and uh, who the most active beneficiaries are, the people who are going after uh, foreclosures. And typically it was saying the average uh, of primary mortgages, homeowners were behind uh, 12 months in their payments before they filed the notice of defaults, which is kind of a surprise to me because it's typically they have to wait, you know, what, 90, 120 days. And then, uh, but so it's, that's been the average. The, uh, the big boys that were going... They're slamming the hammer down where uh, Wells Fargo was number one with about 2,200 foreclosures last quarter and B of A, 1,700, Nation Star with about 1,000. Those are the three big ones. And uh, and Dave, I know your company was very active the last few years in short sales. And um, tell us a little about a new, a for, the difference between a foreclosure and a short sale. You know, what, and, you know, where are we with that whole aspect of real estate? Well, a, sh- a short sale is when you owe more than your house is worth. And a lot of times people couldn't afford the payments for whatever reason. You know, loss of job, change in income, many times divorce, loss of a spouse or whatever. But they find themselves in a situation where they needed to downsize and not, and they couldn't afford that house. And there's a whole list of reasons why. But they, owe, they couldn't sell that house because they owed more than it was worth. And a smaller percentage of the prices have gone up are people in short sales. Many people, you know, they're not in those adjustable rates or interest-only loans, so they're paying down the principles and the prices go up. If prices go back down a little bit, we could see it, could see us go into a short sale, but yet I don't see a huge amount. But even the people that are still bought in those 2006, 2007, maybe early 2008, still may find themselves a little bit upside down in the properties. And it's it's way more advantage for you to do a short sale than it is to allow your property to go to foreclosure. They're saying in this data quick or- article that the, uh, the the people they were targeting were the ones that had a first and a second. They're probably like you're saying in that at the high water more part of the market they bought used a first and a second to buy the house and never you know never saw that you know that enough of a recovery you know to um, so. Um, in that case, you're saying a short sale is way better than having a foreclosure. Well, because and, and it, we're talking about recovery period, you know, where, hey, it may take you longer. And, and they've changed new news, news rules and regulations, as, especially for FHA loans and stuff of what, how, how long do I have to wait before I can get back in the market? But I guarantee the wait is going to be much longer if you allow your property to go to foreclosure than if you do a short sale. I heard it's twice. It's twice as long. Yeah, as basically, it. that's it. Yeah. So, but, but, you know, they change. One thing about the mortgage industry, there's always new rules and regulations of the banks and what was, what was okay, um, you know, before is may, may be different now. I've heard that there, with even FHA, it was only three years for it to do, a sh- to get a new loan after a short sale. I've heard that they just extended it to four years after a short sale. Wow. So bankruptcies and stuff, there's other financial issues. And that's why the credit restoration that you talk about, hey, let's look at this. Sometimes we can get those things removed from their credit, credit with yours yeah. and Darby's help. And I know you guys do a, a great job with the credit restoration. But also making sure that there's a few other items that we get your credit to a, to a point. Because most people, as you talked in our earlier segment, home ownership, percentage of people that own ownership is at a 19-year low. And it's really, so what we're dealing with a lot of people, what I call, hopefully, the recycled. People, the only way to really accumulate wealth is to own real estate. And anybody that's worth anything usually owns some real estate. And so to get people back into the wealth building and get them back into a home, is, that is our goal is to fi- show them a way how they could get in a position, if they can't right now, to get into a position where they could purchase a home and start building that wealth again. Because, you know, let's face it, 
A lot of people have been, over the last six, seven, eight years, have been beat up tremendously based on what's happening with the mortgage industry, the economy, all of the above. So it's, it's that those calls, you know, if you have to do a short sale, that's a financial decision, but, but don't wait too long. We always have people, well, my house is going to, at a trustee sale next week. Can you help me? And it's like, oh, okay, well, you, believe it or not, many times we can. But now it becomes a huge fire drill to bail, bail them out. Mm -hmm. And then we have to, but don't wait, plan in the future. Just like planning to buy, if you're planning to sell, don't wait till you get the notice of trustee you know, posted on your front door. If you're behind in your payments and you can't, make a realistic approach. Pick up the phone and call us at our toll-free number again. We will be able to help you navigate you through those there's you know there's some great new laws that changed in california you know through the years where they can't pursue a deficiency judgment against you if you have a short sale in the first or the second and those things have been really beneficial to the homeowner for california for california every yeah. state's a little bit different i know i know california laws if you have a home in arizona or nevada can't help you there dave Sorry, <laughs> I'm I'm a California real estate broker, you know. And the, so, so what you're saying is, far it's a fine again, it's a financial analysis of your position. If you're behind, you know, and then you need an you need accurate information what the property's worth, what how realistic is it, you know, to sell it? How how can we sell it quickly enough to? And then the, there's a communication that you would establish with the bank. You would negotiate the short sale. You would negotiate. You, you said you did how many in the last? Well, we did over 400 short sales, our company did, in, wow. from 2000, beginning of 2007, probably. I, I know we still have a few in process. But do those always go through? I heard that half the time they don't go through. Yeah, well, we we had we had over a 97% success, success ratio. But sometimes it's better to turn, if look, if we can't help you, we won't even take on the project. We, we're not in business of t taking on a job we can't finish. So if we didn't feel like we could help you, we're not going to even take take it. But in most cases, we could help everybody. And certain banks are different. You know, people have homeowners liens. We've had child support liens. We have IRS liens. We have franchise tax board liens. We have mechanics liens. And and sometimes so it's not just the lender. Mm -hmm. It could be anything. Yeah, we have you know we have homeowners association liens. We have and and. You know, like I said, child support liens, mechanic liens, judgments that become liens on the property. They think just because they did, they attach a lien to the property. Wow. If they allow a credit card to go bad, so there's there's a lot of things that you you may show up on your what we call your preliminary title report that we would have to deal with. And well, so yeah, let's talk more about that after we get back from our break. Uh, you can reach Dave, his company at his toll free number eight eight eight. 308 6979. There's a lot, I mean, there's a lot to plan, you know, whether regardless of what you're doing. You're listening to your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS.